What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we'll cover some fundamental ideas that are essential to programming, such as identifiers, including variables and constants, arrays, functions, and objects, which encompass properties, attributes, and methods. So understanding these core concepts will give you a strong foundation as you prepare for the exam. So let's dive into these details. All right, so let's begin with identifiers. So an identifier is essentially the name we give to different elements in our programs. Identifiers can represent variables, constants, functions, or other programming entities, and they help us track and manipulate data within a program. So let's talk about variables. So a variable, this is a storage location in programming that holds data, which can be changed or modified during program execution. And the purpose of variables is to store temporary data that a program may need to refer to and manipulate as it runs. So here's an example. If you were creating a program to calculate the area of a rectangle, you would use variables to store the values of the rectangle's length and width. Now, in this example, length, width, and area are all variables. The values stored in length and width can change, and the program can calculate a new area each time. Also, in most programming languages, variables must follow certain rules. They should start with a letter or underscore in some languages. They cannot contain spaces or special characters, and they should be descriptive so the purpose of the variable is very clear. All right, next, let's talk about a constant. So a constant, as the name suggests, this is a value that does not change during the execution of a program. Once it's set, it remains the same. And constants, they are used when you need to store data that shouldn't be altered. So for example, mathematical values like pi or fixed configuration settings should be constants. And any example on your screen where pi equals 3.14, pi is a constant because the value of pi does not change. By using a constant, you prevent accidental changes to important data and you improve code readability. Now, many programming languages such as Python and JavaScript don't have built-in support for constants, but developers use conventions like all uppercase letters to signify that a variable should not change. All right, next let's talk about arrays. So an array is a data structure that allows you to store multiple values in a single variable. These values are usually of the same data type, such as integers or strings, and they are stored in contiguous memory locations. Also, arrays make it easier to handle multiple pieces of data efficiently. So arrays are used when you need to store collections of data, such as lists of numbers, a set of names, or any series of related items. Instead of creating individual variables, variables for each item, you can use one array to store them all. And in this screenshot right here, the array fruits contains four elements and you can access individual items in the array by referencing their index like this. So in this picture right here, the array index starts at zero. So fruits with the bracket zero returns the string apple. And if fruits had the bracket one, it would return the string banana and so on and so forth. Now, arrays are especially useful in loops, and you can iterate through an array to perform operations on each element. And as you look at this image right here, this program will print fruit in the list one by one. Now let's move on to functions. So a function, this is a block of organized reusable code that performs a single well-defined task. And functions are a key building block in programming and they help make code modular and easier to manage. So functions allow us to group related lines of code into a single entity, making our code more readable, reusable, and maintainable. In functions, they can take input data, perform operations on it, and return a result. So in this example right here on your screen, we define a function called calculate underscore area with two parentheses. And basically this takes two inputs length and width and returns the product of the two values. And then you can call this function wherever you need to calculate an area. So let's talk about the benefits of functions. So 
once a function is defined, it can be called any number of times without needing to rewrite the code. Also, another function is it allows for you to break a program into small manageable functions that improves the organization and clarity of the code. And if you need to make changes to how something works, you only need to update the function and every place that calls the function will automatically use the updated code. Another benefit, the functions, they can accept parameters, which allows you to pass data into them when you call them. So in this example right here, length and width are the parameters. And also functions, they can return values providing the results of their operations to the calling code. All right, finally, let's talk about objects. So this concept is central to object-oriented programming, which is a common paradigm in programming. So an object, this is a collection of data and methods that operate on that data. Objects are instances of classes which define the structure and behavior of the objects. In simpler terms, classes act as blueprints and objects are the actual things you create from those blueprints. And the purpose is objects allow programmers to model real world entities and organize code in a way that's easier to manage, especially in large programs. And properties or attributes, they are the data stored within an object and they represent the characteristics or traits of the object. So example, if we had an object representing a car, the car's properties could include its color, make, model, and year. And here in this image right here, you can see the make, model, color, and year are the attributes of the car class. And when you create an object from this class, you can assign these attribute values down here. So the object, my car, now has properties that describe the specific car. Also, let's talk about methods. So methods are functions defined inside a class that describes the behaviors or actions an object can perform. So methods allow objects to perform actions, often using or modifying the object's properties. And just like regular functions, methods can accept parameters and return values. So in this picture right here, we see the start engine method, and this is a method that belongs to the car class. So ultimately, by using methods, we can define the actions our objects can take, and each object created from a class has access to the methods defined in that class. All right, so let's go ahead and try to wrap all of this up real quick. So we're going to summarize the key programming concepts that we've covered. So we talked about identifiers. These are names used for variables, constants, functions, and objects in programs. Variables store data that can change while constants hold fixed values. We talked about arrays. Arrays are data structures used to store collections of related data accessed by an index. And then we talked about functions. Functions are blocks of reusable code that perform specific tasks and they improve modularity and reusability in programs. And we also talked about objects. So objects are instances of classes that contain properties or attributes and methods, which are also known as functions that allow them to perform certain actions. Now, understanding these core concepts is essential for programming and helps make code efficient, organized, and easy to maintain. And these concepts are foundational for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam and will aid in your exam preparation. Now, with all of that said, let's do some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, what is the primary difference between a variable and a constant in programming? Is it variables can hold more than one value while constants can hold only one? Is it variables can change their value during program execution while constants cannot? Is it variables are defined globally while constants are defined locally? Or is it variables store data in arrays while constants store data in objects? And the correct answer is variables can change their value during program execution while constants cannot. So a variable is a name, storage, location, and memory that can hold different values during the program's execution. A constant, this has a fixed value that does not change once assigned. And this distinction is key in programming as constants are often used for values that remain the same throughout a program like mathematical constants. Next question. Which of the following best describes an array? Is it a single value assigned to a variable? Is it a collection of key value pairs? Is it a data structure that holds multiple values of the same data type? Or is it a function that takes in arguments and returns a value? 
And the correct answer is it is a data structure that holds multiple values of the same data type. So an array is a data structure used to store a collection of elements typically of the same data type. Each element in the array is indexed, making it easier to access and modify values using their index positions. And the final question is, what is a method in object-oriented programming? Is it a variable inside an object? Is it a function associated with an object that performs an action? Is it a collection of objects? Or is it a type of constant that belongs to an object? And the correct answer is, it is a function associated with an object that performs an action. So a method is a function that is defined inside an object and is used to perform operations on the object's data or provide functionality related to the object. And methods typically operate on the properties or attributes of the object that they belong to.